Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the USA Volleyball Show. We are the official podcast of USA Volleyball, as you already know. Uh, we hope you are all doing well. Just a quick reminder, I am flying solo once again today, as you all already know. Um, my co-host Steven is still on family leave, being a dad, doing dad duties, and doing great things there, too. So, uh, shout out to Steven listening from home. You better be, otherwise, um, yeah, I'm just kidding. But yeah, shout out to Steven listening from home. Hope your um, time off is treating you well, and can't wait to have you back soon. Um, lately... I've been busy myself getting ready for our event season. Got a site visit coming up. We have our uh, packing date, which our event always does for every event that we host for our Salt Lake City 18 showdown is coming up. And um, coaching, more event planning, more and more and more coaching, all the above there too. But just a quick shout out because uh, we did just win over the weekend. So shout out to Team Velocity 17 and Black. We're taking home first place in our local power tournament over the weekend. Um, very proud of you, ladies. Um, way to step up, play through the uh, adversity. Way to come back and win uh, some, some some very, very, very important critical sets. A way to play not only at your potential, but past your potential. I cannot wait for the rest of the season with you guys. So uh, shout out to Team Velocity 17 Black. And uh, we're going to have a very exciting season. The goal is to get a bid, and if they keep us up, we definitely may earn one of those bids to national this year. So, fingers crossed. Now, before we get into today's uh, episode, if you missed our last episode, please, please, please go back and check it out. Um, in episode number 82, we sat down with Olympic gold medalist and U.S. Women's National Team setter Jordan Holter from the 2023 ABCA convention in Tampa, Florida. Jordan shared some of her personal interests, including how she didn't go to her homecoming and instead went to Riot Fest Rock and Roll Music Festival with her dad, which is so, so, so cool. Uh, still love talking about that story to this day. Um, Jordan also talked about her uh, recovery from her knee injury and how she is looking ahead to this upcoming season and also Paris. Um, so much more. Be sure to check out that episode on all podcast platforms and watch the video episode on YouTube and the USA Volleyball website. Now, time to introduce myself awkwardly for the news with Hughes with myself. <laughs> Registration is open until January 26th uh, for the 2024 Women's National Team Open Program. Uh, program dates are February 23rd through the 25th at the Olympic and Paralympic Training Center. Make sure you visit the website for more details. As another reminder, uh, the 2024 Boys Junior National Championship registration is open along with Girls Junior National 18s and GJNC 11s through 13s and also 14s through 17s registration is now open. A lot of national championship registration opening up too. So be sure to check out the website, uh, usavolleyball.org for all inquiries about that. You guys can also email events at usav.org if you have event specific questions about all national championships going on across the board. But we're not done with registration because also starting today, registration for one of the oldest volleyball championship on U.S. soil is happening again. That's right. The USA Volleyball Open National Championship registration is open as of today, a.k.a. opens. Be sure to come register your team and check out some really high level adult volleyball happening in Columbus, Ohio for May 24th through the 29th at the Greatest Columbus Convention Center. Love the adults, man. I cannot wait for the tournament to happen this year. Again, we're always working on uh, improvements to the tournament, making things great for the adults, and just hosting a great atmosphere. So we cannot wait for opens this year, too. Registration is open today. Be sure to register your team. Also, starting today, Pro Volleyball Federation's inaugural season begins tonight. That's right. If you're listening to this, to this on release day, this is huge for the sport of volleyball and for the sport of professional volleyball specifically um, in the U.S. This is the one of the first inaugural pro leagues that is being launched here as well, too. I know we have a few that are you know already on 
on the cusp of you know their seasons shout out to athlete unlimited as well too now we got pro volleyball federation and just be sure to tune in tonight at 8 p.m eastern time uh, that'll be 5 p.m pacific time streaming on stadium the atlanta vibes will be taking on the omaha supernovas there will be matches as well on thursday and friday night streaming on stadium and bally's streaming apps i believe streaming is free on both of those as well too so do what you got to do. Do not miss this high level and historic inaugural season that pro volleyball is about to take on as well, too. I'm personally excited about it. As a coach, I'm telling all my players to watch this. I mean, this is this is huge, you know, so uh, you don't want to miss it. Cannot wait. And best of luck to the Pro Volleyball Federation and Pro Volleyball Federation teams competing this season. Big day, right? Lots of going on. Be sure to follow all of the action on USA Volleyball social medias. And for more on the latest news, always tune into our website at usavolleyball.org. Now, coming up on today's episode, today's show, we are continuing our conversations from the AVCA uh, convention in Tampa back in December 2023. Um, this time with our chat from none other than Excelsior Region Commissioner, former club director, director of Woosh Volleyball Club, uh, of two decades, Hazel Goldstein. On top of being a region commissioner and running a club for two decades, Hazel has served as the Excelsior, Excelsior, excuse me, region uh, assistant club director, uh, juniors director, and she has also been officiating across all levels too. So Hazel wears a lot of hats. Um, she was amazing to talk to. She also talks about the name transition with the region, which is very important as well too. I'm very informational as well. I'm, so I'm very glad you um, took the time to go into detail about a lot of that. Hazel also ch chats about her, her retirement plans, well-earned retirement at that. Um, she also has done so much with her region to help the game. And again, we are so glad um, we were able to carve some time out, talk to Hazel and, you know, sit down her with her before she uh, sails into that sunset. But enough about that. I know you're tired of hearing me talk. Let's get right into it. Here is Hazel. Again, thanks for jumping on our podcast. Um, this is, I think, very highly requested by a lot of people in the regions for uh, <laughs> was, uh, yeah. over Denver meetings, too. So shout out <laughs> to them for making it happen and yeah. throwing a suggestion out there. But nice, easy question. Um, how are you introduced to the game of volleyball? I was introduced by my daughter, okay. as so many people were. At age 13, she started to play volleyball. Um, she was 5'10", could not have walked across this very smooth floor without killing people. But her, the high school coach could see that this was a kid who wanted to play. Uh -huh. And that was that. We just got on the bandwagon and off we went. So you, that kind of kicked off your volleyball interest, your volleyball career. It did. And then how, what was your path to then becoming a regional commissioner uh, for the Excelsior <laughs> region? Long and involved. Yeah. <laughs> um, when my daughter graduated from high school, um, my husband and I had both been very involved as volunteers with our club that she worked with. The club director of the time resigned abruptly. Mm -hmm. The coaches called and said, would you please be the club director? I said, I have no idea what to do. I'm not a coach. I'm just a human. Well, you're an organized human, which I am. <laughs> and so that started 20 years of being club director. And I loved it, mm -hmm. you know. And what um, club is this for? Yeah. This was for Woosh Volleyball Club in New York. Um, it unfortunately ceased to exist during COVID, mm -hmm. as many did. But um, it was great. Mm -hmm. It was great. I had great kids, mostly great parents. <laughs> 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 you know, the big joke was we all wanted to coach, have orphans. But, um, <laughs> but it was fun. And we had wonderful experiences and made lifetime friends. Mm -hmm. Or and from that, I became involved in the region okay. as an assistant juniors director. And then I was yeah. a juniors director for 10 years mm -hmm. and then commissioner. Mm -hmm. And this is my eighth and final year. Right. Yes. Awesome. Well, I mean, a great career as regional commissioner. I know they're I've enjoyed sad it. to see you leave uh, <laughs> that role. But um, I guess kind of just taking a little step back to your club director days, spent 20 years as a club mm -hmm. director. What were some of your favorite parts about being a club director, uh, working with those, you know, clubs and those youth uh, athletes. Watching 
young women. We had we had boys for a very brief time. There's no boys high school where we are, but okay. we for four years were able to sustain a boys team. But uh -huh. to watch young ladies turn into young women and to uh, do our best to empower them to be better people through the medium of volleyball. Mm -hmm. I mean, yes, we wanted to win. Everybody wants to win. But to us, the more important piece was taking these young ladies to places they had never been before, having them stay in a hotel room. Some of them had never done that. Um, teaching them what it's like to eat out. Some of them had never done that. Yeah. Um, we were big on discipline. You know, rules, life is created by, with rules. And we want you to have a free spirit and free thoughts, but by the same token, you need to be on path you need to follow the guidelines that we've set out for you. And the biggest joke was that when I inherited the club, we had one page of policies, one page. By the time I was gone, we had four pages because every time someone did something stupid, it was a new policy because it never occurred to us that we would have to write this yeah. down because who would do such a thing? You don't know thing? until you know, right? Oh, until it happens, actually. Until, until it happens, happens yeah. and you go, Okay, another policy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was the people that made all the difference for me. And yeah. we got to travel. Um, again, taking these kids, many of them had never been on a plane. Wow. We took them, the first time we went to Junior Nationals was in um, San Jose, California in 1996. And coast to coast, right? Coast to coast. <laughs> it was a big deal. Yeah. And we also made a point anytime we did have teams go to Nationals, to spend extra time where we were to show them the area. In Salt Lake City, we took them down to um, Zion and Bryce National yeah. Parks. Oh, cool. You know, in, um, in San Jose, we took them into San Francisco. Uh, in Houston, I'm not exactly sure what we did, but Na we did NASA something. NASA or maybe some, maybe. Bar maybe yeah, some barbecue. Yeah, it could have been, yeah. been NASA. <laughs> okay. In Atlanta, our coach had a place in the Great Smokies. Okay. We, they stopped in the Smokies. They saw that and then went on okay. to Atlanta. Um, these were just kids who didn't usually travel. Yeah. So it was a big deal for them. That's really cool. Yeah, that's great that you, you, you know, recognize that and spent time to kind of show them you know how to travel and get you know a little bit different culture from what they're used to yes uh back home that's yeah that's really cool oh, thank so you. if you could um you could go back you know same starting point with the knowledge that you know now <laughs> would you do it again if so would you change anything i would do it again um we were for the time that i was club director and all volunteer staff mm -hmm. no one was paid um and we were able to attract really great coaches. Um, the biggest thing I might change is to kind of beat my coaches over the head and say, take advantage of this education that yeah. we're providing for you. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and some did, but a lot of them, they were very busy. I get it. They were they were parents. They were they had other jobs. Coaching was their passion, which is why we were able to get them to join us. But that's probably you know take advantage of some of the opportunities that were there that you went uh, maybe later mm. well later's gone you know? <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. yeah that makes a lot of sense yeah mm -hmm. um i guess you know kind of take us through some of the basics of the excelsior region um you know number of clubs sure. uh events that you host uh take us through some of maybe those maybe before we even start there um do you want to talk about the the rebranding of your region oh, first and then yeah. i would i would be that? happy to do that Great. that Thank was a big that uh -huh. big deal for us mm -hmm. um as a lifetime resident of new york state i had always been told that the word iroquois was the name of the tra of the um the nation the iroquois nation mm -hmm. We have a goodly percentage of Native American players. And about three years ago, one of them called me up and said, you do know that the nation does not use the name Iroquois. I said, no, I didn't know that. Why? It is apparently a French slur on the nation's name. Oh. I said, oh, well, we need to do something about that. Yeah. So we put together a committee um, COVID got in the middle of it, but we persisted and um, we took input from our membership. Every member was invited to submit a name or potential names. 
Um, we narrowed it down to the top five. We put it out, the membership voted on it, and we became Excelsior Empire. Wow. We mm -hmm. were fortunate we have in our club director ranks um, an attorney, more than one, um, who helped us through all the legal things with the joyous work of the state. And, um, and we rebranded Scott and his team, put together a lovely new no logo for us. And um, we've been rolling along ever since. Mm -hmm. There are still times when I see uh, people that I knew from before and they're like, wait a minute, you're not Iriva anymore? No, no, we're Excelsior Empire, mm -hmm. XLVB. Yeah. Um, and it's mostly been well received. Good. Some yeah. of our older members were distressed, mm -hmm. but that's part of change, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for bringing that up. I, yeah. I completely yeah. forgot about that. Yeah. I, I just appreciate how collective that was and how considerate of, you know, the, 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 your members and staff and all potential participating parties. Like when it comes when 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 considering that, too, you know, you talk about a lot of, you know, NFL teams or <laughs> NBA teams or, yeah. you know, just Poof. everyone just, you know, rebranding things without considering, you know, all of the factors in it too so that's really i think that really good because point we're a small region mm -hmm. that we do a lot of things like that collectively mm -hmm. um which makes our people um fairly loyal to us yeah you know um we're big on customer service again because we're small none of us are full-time we all have as we call them real jobs yeah. <laughs> volleyball is our passion but mm -hmm. our real jobs um do periodically yeah. take precedence um, but our membership knows that, um, and we're, we're pretty clear, like, you know, you don't call me after 9 p.m. You can call me at 5 a.m., but after 9 p.m., <laughs> nope, it's a law of diminishing returns. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, yeah, thank you for sharing that, uh, mm -hmm. that background uh, on the change and everything. But, yeah, I guess kind of take us through some of the basics around the region, you know, the okay. clubs, the events that you host? We um, currently have 87 juniors clubs mm -hmm. and we are in a very large geographic area. We run from an hour north of New York City to Canada. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. It's about a 12 hour drive. Mm -hmm. We run um, east to the borders of Vermont and Connecticut and Massachusetts. And in the West, we run to the other side of Syracuse, which is mid-state and down, and then the Western Empire region. And we have a lot of back and forth between the Western Empire region and us kids on the border. The same with down where I live near, near New York, kids from Jiva and, and kids from us go back and forth okay. between the regions, and it's fine. Um, we are consistently growing, which we're very pleased about. Um, right now we're at uh, 4,500 members, which is uh, an increase for us again, and we have had several clubs choose to do the AAU JVA route, and yep. that's their choice. And I was worried at first, but then I saw our membership continued to rise. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, and I said it before, I think our biggest asset is our willingness to hold a new club director's hand. You know, they start in and they, they look at Sports Engine and go, oh my God. You know, yeah. they look at, at signing up for a tournament and go, how do I do this? Yeah. You know, and we're happy to help them. Yeah. We provide mentorship to um, clubs who run their own tournaments. The majority of the tournaments in the region are run by clubs and they use it as sources of income um, or opportunities for their kids to play at home and not have to travel. The region itself runs four uh, three multi-day tournaments and one one-day tournament for our 18 girls because we championship them out at the end of March since their championships are in April. We don't hold them through till May till the rest of our regional championships. And that has become a really big thing in the region. We were fortunate to find big space, which took us probably 10 years till we could find a venue that could hold more than 12 courts. Um, now we're fortunate we work with the state of New York at the New York State Fairgrounds and we have one venue that holds 24 courts and one that holds 12 and there's other ones around where we can put six and eight courts when we need it. Right. Okay. Yeah. All within walking distance of each other. Oh wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. And free parking. 
Oh, that's important. Free parking. Wow. Free parking. Keep the parents happy. Yes, it does. Keep those parents happy. You know, that is a critical thing. Yep. Absolutely. You know, we don't let them bring in their chairs, but at least they park for free. Hey, especially (laughs) if they're doing that twelve-hour drive from. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Well, can't believe that. That's Mm -hmm. that's a big area. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. What are um What are some of the uh, successes that you've seen? Uh, you know, in your region overall over the past few years. I know you talked about a little bit, you know, growth in tournaments, growth in membership and development there too. But is is there something specific you really want to, you know, either talk about or acknowledge? I really do think the growth of the the region taking on multi-day tournaments Mm -hmm. has been our biggest piece because many of our clubs are small. Yeah. You know, there may be four teams, maybe on a good year. Um, And they don't go out of region. You know, they're not going to qualifiers. We have some that do, some that are very successful, but most of them are not. Yeah. And so by the fact of the region putting in a two or three day event, you know, and you watch their faces when they come in, you know, the 14s come in and 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 their eyes are going to fall out of their heads because mm-hmm. they, they can't believe yeah. that they're they seeing just, all these courts that's cool. in one place. And oh, my God. And, and by the next they year, they're very cool. They're blasé. Yeah. You know, they're, yeah. oh, I've been, <laughs> I've been here, here before. before. Yeah. I've been here before. I'm cool. <laughs> but um, the little guys are the best. Yeah. You know, and we've worked hard on our 12s. Uh, we offer two levels of 12, developmental and non-developmental. And we adjust court stuff accordingly. And that's a big area of growth for us as well. Uh, just want to chime in really quick. We are live ish at the ABCA convention. <laughs> so we're going to have some background noise yeah. um, <laughs> as the as the marketplace floor is now open mm-hmm. and uh, the vendors are active. I but, think that guy kind of copied our intro with our podcast. You guys yeah. know that, you know? But hey, I did hear that to yeah. each of their own. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But um, I guess just to die, you know, get away from the conversation of, of the region just for a minute. Just being at the ABCA convention, what are your impressions? How how many years have you been to the ABCA convention? Uh, yeah, what, what I've are been your coming year? to convention for about <laughs> ten years. Okay, and um, there's always information. Yeah. there's always things for me to learn, and I am not a coach. Yeah, um, as a club director, my job was to make sure everything was done so my coaches could coach and not have to worry about hotels and tournaments and uniforms and all that. Yeah. But um, I'm always meeting people that I know. One of the best things about volleyball are the people we meet along the way. Yeah. And um, seeing friends that I haven't seen in a while, um, it's a great thing. And of course, watching the Final Four is no, uh, uh, yeah, you know, no problem. Those were some great matches last <laughs> yeah. night too. Yeah. There yeah. were. Yeah. I was sad for Wisconsin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The yeah, coach was, there used to be in our region. Okay. So, oh, okay. you know, mm-hmm. yeah. they hold a place in our hearts. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But you that's know. cool to hear. Yeah. As, as not a coach, but you can still get a lot out of the event. Absolutely. Um, even if you're not a coach uh, at any level of volleyball. Um, but uh, also, yeah, just I think that's the thing we're keep hearing is just it's it's a big reunion. Of it sorts, is a big volleyball reunion. It is. It yeah. is. It's so good to see. I saw someone yesterday I hadn't seen in about five years. And that's we sat down and talked awesome. for an hour and talked about life and mm-hmm. this and that and the other thing. And, you know. That's cool. It's it's an, a wonderful opportunity. Yeah. ABCA, uh, it, this always kind of reminds me of, uh, this is kind of like the opens of, you know, coaches and, you know, yes. that side of things there too. Because, you know, people use opens for the adult nationals like they're just big reunion. You know, oh, they yes, haven't it seen is. their friends and maybe some family members in years. And mm-hmm. they just want to come meet, meet and have a good time and compete but instead of competing here you know we're just kind of engulfed in all of these educational opportunities and resources and yeah. it's just like that too so i i definitely appreciate being able to experience both too so yeah. what has been your favorite uh city that so far that uh abca has been uh you know well held tampa's in? certainly very nice mm-hmm. right now especially, especially following up uh, omaha oh, oh that was <laughs> very cold. really really cold very cold, cold. Yeah. Mm-hmm. i've been impressed with tampa it's, it's yes. a nice city yes yeah. i have not spent really much time here before and uh it's yeah, been great it's our first time it's here been as well. great yeah. you know i like columbus but i like columbus i just think it's a great city mm-hmm. yeah. um you know in the other cities yeah they're okay but right now <laughs> it's cold right now, in new york <laughs> it's yeah. nice here yeah. no, we just got, I think we got a little bit of snow yep. mm-hmm. yeah yeah so, right uh, you guys escaped yeah. that a little bit <laughs> you, you know you know the change oh, yeah yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> i don't well, think it's nothing like new york cold but it's a uh, well different kind of cold yeah. it's a di- it is a different, different cold. kind of cold and colorado is just 
such a glorious place. Oh yeah, beautiful. You know, I love mm -hmm. to go out. When we go out for meetings, I just kind of sit there. Can't wait. <laughs> you know, stare at the wind stare mountains, at the mountains and right try there. to behave. Yeah, and yeah pay well, attention. twenty-four May meetings, Columbus. So you know, I know, I know. I'll get, I'll get. I had my October in in Denver, and now I'll get Columbus, and then I'll be uh, no longer there. <laughs> <laughs> Well, always welcome, though. <laughs> well, thank you very yeah. much. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, I guess going back to uh, the region conversation, mm -hmm. what is the day to day for you uh, as a regional commissioner? Certain times of year are always significantly more busy than yeah. others. As um, tryouts start and membership starts, um, both our registrar and myself and our juniors director are answering the questions and trying to steer parents on the path. You know, no, do not register yourself. Register your child. Take a tryout membership. You know, all that kind of stuff. And and the giant sign on the website that says no refunds really means that. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, and then and I'm the tournament director for our major tournaments. So I, I do a lot of the logistical work. I have all the contracts that have to go back to the various places um, setting up for all the things that go into a tournament, the uh -huh. courts, the pipe and drape, the chairs, to this, um, working with our head official and our assigner to make sure we have that done. You know, it's, some days it's all day. Other days it's like, nope, gotta do this tomorrow. Um, so it, it runs in, in fits. You mm -hmm. know, when I'm not busy at my real life work, um, I, can, I can devote a whole day and get a lot of club stuff done or region stuff done. We don't have an office. All the documents live in my business in file cabinets. Um, and they'll go to the next guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Here they are. Here yeah. are the file cabinets. <laughs> you know. Um, but we have a good group and um, good communication happens. And that's a critical need for any region, office-wise or otherwise. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. yeah. You touch on getting, you know, parents up to speed and uh, understanding of what, it, you know, the requirements of a membership and what to expect at tournaments, all that. Um, but why should a parent, um, you know, of a young athlete consider getting their getting their child involved in the region? Several reasons. First of all, a good friend who's an official once said to me, Volleyball is the last civilized sport. Um, and I truly believe that. It is still a sport with honor. It is still a sport where rules matter. Um, and, and I think that there are so many good role models in volleyball that young athletes can follow um, that it's good. And it's good for our kids to get out there and it's exercise. You know, they may not be on a national team or an elite team doesn't matter you're playing you're getting involved you're making new friends you know meeting people hopefully going to places you've never been before yeah. we laugh and say some of our our tournament locations are not really where any of us would go <laughs> otherwise than being in a tournament but you know what it's a part of the state you've never been check it out see what's there exactly especially if that state wasn't even on your list of you know your dream lift of, of you know cities you want to go to yeah. and experience i know uh you know without you know this event manager job with usa volleyball that i've been you know privileged enough to you know stumble upon there are a few cities where i probably would, would have never visited you know yeah and you know some are sleeper cities you know very surprising very fun and engaging food culture outside of the convention center there too yes very hospitality you don't know until you're there exactly yeah because you go, you look at it and go, oh, I don't need to go there, but I'm going. So <laughs> let's see what I can find out yep. and what can I do there to make it, you know, a positive experience for everybody. Yeah. I think one city that stands out for, for me in that, in that regards is Detroit. I had a great yes. time in Detroit. I did too. I did too. Um, and a lot of great food restaurants there. I was, Very walkable city too. It was. It turned out to be a great time. Yeah. No. Yeah. Um, I guess let's talk a little bit about your region and some of the people that have been just a big influence uh, in your region. Who's mm -hmm. who's kind of helping, you know, grow the sport at the local uh, level uh, there in the region? Our uh, juniors director, Tracy Manning, she's a club director as well, does a tremendous job working with our club directors and helping them, giving them tools, you know, especially when someone is new, they don't know where to start. Well, I'll just put together some girls. Well, there's a little more to it than that. 
and um, she holds hands, she helps him with direction, gives him thoughts, um, tries to assign them a mentor if it's if it's prob you know possible, somebody in their um, area that is willing to help them, and um, that's made a big difference. Um, our a good website makes yeah. all the difference in the world. Yeah. Oh my goodness, you know the things you find out and the things you learn and um, responsive board members and responsive um, people in chairman positions make a big difference. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if a parent of an athlete wants to start playing volleyball in your region, you mentioned the website, is that the you know, primary source, that first step where yes. they should you know, access yes. more information and you know, take a deeper dive into clubs and all that? We've got lists of, um, of current active <laughs> clubs mm -hmm. on the website contact information from that we've also got ask a question you know and a parent will say well i live in such and such a place where do you think i should go because there's six clubs here and you know our juniors director has a great knowledge of our clubs uh -huh. and she can say well if your child is competitive or wants to be look in this direction if you're just looking for recreational purposes look in this direction yeah, I guess um, we've talked a little bit about, touched on the growth of the sport, mm -hmm. uh, specifically in your region. But what about, you know, the growth of the sport in the U.S.? What do you think are some of the driving factors oh, for that? Oh, I think it's that? fabulous. Yeah. Um, we're so fortunate to have that. I think we've had increased public relations from USAV, you know, um, getting, getting things out there. I think that the regions are becoming much more knowledgeable about what to and how to let people know that we exist. And um, and this fact, you know, television hasn't hurt volleyball at all. Yeah. You know, more and more people are watching and they go, oh, well, that could be fun. Mm -hmm. Well, of course it could, yep. you know, get out there and go. And um, we have growth, you know, in our high schools. Uh, in New York State, we still have two different times of year when high school volleyball is played. Uh -huh. We have fall ball and winter ball. And more and more of the winter ball people are swinging into fall so that the club season then opens up for them. Right. Um, our boys are also split, um, but the boys are growing too. Slower, mm -hmm. but they're growing. You know, and, and a lot of people, once they see it, go, oh, look at those guys play. Yep. I could do that. Of course you can. Yeah. You know, anybody can. Some of you are better than others. You know, some are natural athletes and you just have to refine their skills. Others are, you know, as I said, my then 13 year old who would take down the booth in one fell swoop, um, you know, turned into a division one player, but <laughs> through hard work yep. and learning to coordinate, yeah. you know, makes a big difference and yeah. solid coaching. Good coaches are, are the, the core of what we do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you mentioned and, television and just like, I mean, we're right here at the NCAAs where uh, they're on ESPN, the semifinals were on ESPN, and then the finals is gonna be on ABC. So they're getting on some big networks now and yes. younger athletes, younger kids are seeing volleyball for the first time on TV and wondering what the heck this sport is and wanna get involved in it. They uh, do. And parents do. are seeing it too. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, and then um, we're, we're mostly a very rural region but in the regions that have bigger cities and you can do the tri volleyball days oh, yeah. and things like yeah. that that's a wonderful opportunity it just doesn't work as well for us given the nature of the woods right <laughs> yeah. you know and the countryside and, and the big, fields and the farm and spread out your region right and too, how yeah. spread out we are mm -hmm. but um you know it's any opportunity is a good opportunity and we strongly encourage our clubs to do um, volley kids, volley tots, things like that. Yeah. Just, you know, do a Sunday night league, get the kids started and they'll go, oh, this is nice. I like this. It doesn't you take know. long for them to get hooked. I no, think. not yeah. at all. <laughs> not at all. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you kind of touched on a little earlier about how it takes, you know, a good coach to, you know, get a player firing on, on, on all cylinders and develop and and all that stuff too but you know it takes good officials as well and there's yes, a whole does. you know plethora of uh, you know development and resources for that too and you yourself you know we're also an official i or, was yeah yeah it's on the high school level uh college and at the usa level right i did usa for a couple seasons but it was challenging as a club director mm -hmm. to also be an official it, be, it really was a conflict of interest so 
I stepped back from that, but I stayed with mm -hmm. high school and college officiating, and I still do scorekeeping. Got it. What made you want to get, become an official? Ha. When my daughter was a senior. <laughs> it's always your daughter. I love it. It's that. always <laughs> the daughter. It goes back to that. It goes back to the daughter. <laughs> we had just fallen in love with the sport. And I said to my husband, well, I want to stay involved, and she's going to be playing in college, and we're going to watch her, but I want to stay involved. So I signed up to be an official um, for a high school. And I loved it. Absolutely loved it. And then I suddenly became the club director, too. So that was an interesting, unplanned turn. Mm -hmm. But it all worked out. And I, I had the good fortune to be able to do that for about 15 years. I had the pleasure of officiating a number of New York State championships. I was scared to death. You know, yeah. they assign you that morning and go, okay, you're going to do this and you're going to do this. And I went, it's a big Me? stage, yeah. Pause, wait, 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 wait. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, are Deep you breath. sure? Deep breath. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll be back in five minutes and I'll be better. You need to take a walk, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, have to, I, have, I have to leave the room. Yeah. You know? But it was great fun. And um, mm. I discovered a love of scorekeeping. And so I still do collegiate um, scorekeeping and, and really, really enjoy it. Yeah. What are some of your favorite memories from officiating? Did you ever get to officiate a da your daughter's matches at all? Or no. was that a conflict of interest? Well, yeah. she had graduated by the time I <laughs> okay. was, I okay. was officiating. Was in. <laughs> but I had so many of my, my, um, my club kids. Oh, yeah. And it would be like, ladies, remember, I'm here in an official yeah. capacity. You are the player. I am the referee. We'll wave. Mm -hmm. How we do it. And that, but, but. I said, no, 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 we can do this. Mm -hmm. We can be professional, you know, and, and it was a riot sometimes. Mm -hmm. And the parents too, it's like, yeah. thank you. As soon as you make a call they don't like, they're they, like, oh, well, oh yeah. But you know better. Not they <laughs> they were quite vocal and that was okay. Mm -hmm. You know, made me a better yeah. official sometimes. Yeah. Not all yeah, the time. Sometimes, that, sometimes those it's just like, can be... you know, you see it and you're there and you're on the ladder and you yeah. see what's going on and they're sitting six seats mm -hmm. up in the stand going, I don't understand this, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> you know, but um, it was great. I mm -hmm. really enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. So what would you say to a uh, current or former volleyball athlete or any individual who is looking to start or is interested in uh, a career in officiating? What advice would you have for them? It's a wonderful opportunity to give back to a sport that has given you so much. Um, and yes, I made money and you can make money doing it. Um, again, a wonderful network of friends that you meet along the way and um, from all over the country. And that's really a that's a gift, mm -hmm. you know, but most importantly, to be a good example to the younger players. You know, you do your best. You, everybody makes mistakes and you, you know, try not to cringe and go well, that was a bad one you know but but you do what you have to do and and do the best job that you can and i think it's a good example for um players and i hope that, that former players athletes will get involved with it you know especially club players that may or may not be playing in college yeah. in your off season you can you could become a referee and it's a for you with your knowledge of the game to start with it's a real easy way to make money for the weekend yeah, yeah make good money you can yep. travel like we've talked about a yep. lot too. Mm -hmm. travel see new cities and some of those exotic places yeah, that you're never right. going to go to again yes, yeah. yes. detroit michigan very <laughs> exotic no <laughs> um but no it's a great opportunity for for those you know who are looking to stay in volleyball like yes. yourself uh you, with your daughter you know you guys found the love for volleyball and you wanted to keep going in volleyball and you yeah. went to officiating and then that snowballed into <laughs> so more many other things yeah <laughs> But speaking of all the other things, uh, yeah, you mentioned before retirement coming mm -hmm. next year. Is that right? Or uh, August one? August one next August year. August one in okay. twenty four. Uh, my term is up, and mm -hmm. we will be electing a new commission. Our region elects their uh, commissioner, mm -hmm. and we will be electing a new commissioner in April. Okay. And uh, the nominating committee is on the hunt, and doing I'll, their job yeah obviously the region is going to miss you i'm sure you'll still stay involved in some capacity i am i'm i'm going to still continue to run our big tournaments okay. okay um all that knowledge rolls around my yeah. brain and i'm continuing to start to, to write not to start to write down 
um, job descriptions and things that have evolved over the um, eight years we've been doing these big tournaments. You know, we thought we knew everything the first year and we knew nothing. So now that we're in our eighth year and the tournaments are just growing exponentially, yeah. which is woohoo, happy, yeah. um, challenging, but happy. We're going forward with that. Yeah. Are you um, obviously probably a little bittersweet, kind of, you know, not, not wanting is. to step away, but realizing maybe it's your time, but are you excited to bring in a new commissioner and, Absolutely. and see what they can bring to the region? We need someone younger. I am not. Um, and it needs to be somebody younger who has a much better grasp of the technology. I know just enough to be dangerous, yeah. you know, and um, I, we need people who really know what they're doing because that's the key to what's going on. Communication with our membership, communication with everyone involved is the key. And a new commissioner is going to bring in that new knowledge. And, you know, I'm not leaving the country. I'm not even leaving the state. I'm, I'm just going to be there and try to shut up and um, talk, speak when spoken to. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, do you you have any hobbies or, you know, anything you're looking forward to yeah, kind of take on outside plans, yeah. of uh -huh. volleyball once you retire? Um, my husband and I like to sail. We do a lot Ooh, of sailing awesome. and um, I love to read. So I look forward to more reading time and potentially more sailing time if the wind works. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you're kind of trapped with the wind. But mm -hmm. um, and we also own our own business and we're getting in a position to sell that and be retired from that as well. Mm -hmm. okay. So we'll be like really retired and then we'll be working grandparents. Yeah. <laughs> Sailing off into the sunset. Set right. with, <laughs> with the grandchildren in tow. Yeah. Yeah. That's going to be our, yeah. our, Might be the title of the episode. episode yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sailing off to a deserted <laughs> island, island far away from, <laughs> from, from anyone we know. Mm -hmm. Give me give me a Kindle and a Wi-Fi connection. That's all I'm you good. need. That's all you need. Yeah. Um, well, yeah. Hazel, thank you so much for taking the time to sit down thank and talk you. to us and share a little bit about your region, your career, thank you. uh, a great career. And I know Excelsior is going to miss you. USA Volleyball is going to miss you, but you'll, you'll still be around. You'll be involved. I will miss all my friends at yeah. USAV mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah. That's one of the joys of doing this yeah. Yeah. is getting to, to meet so many amazing people. Yeah. But, you know, they're probably going to pull me back into yep. a committee. <laughs> Rope anyway. you back in, yeah. Yeah, somehow. You'll be back at ABC I Air yeah. opens yeah. and yeah. have a big reunion again. There so, we yeah. go. Mm -hmm. And that, that's the best part. Thank you so much for asking. Yeah. Oh, thank um, you. Anything else you'd like to share or talk about before we let you go here? No. I'll turn it all to you. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Well, thank you so much. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Again, such a great person to sit down and chat with. Um, just, uh, it's funny uh, because our... In our Denver meetings, uh, in our annual Denver meetings, um, this past October, we had a lot of region reps walk up to us and say, hey, we got a perfect interview for you guys if you're coming back to uh, ABCA. So we had we had Hazel on uh, unofficially on our books for quite a while. And, you know, again, she did not disappoint. And just a great, um, it's always a great feeling to, you know, give region commissioners and uh, any reps from regions uh, a voice and a platform to just talk, just talk about the work that they do within each of their regions. Okay. Across 40 regions, there could be two people running an entire region um, of volleyball and that's from officiating to, you know, juniors, to adults, to uh, grassroots. It is, it takes a village and sometimes you don't have that. You have a village of two to three people max. So um, just a big shout out to everyone again. Um, Thank you again, Hazel, for again taking some time out of your busy schedule at AVCA to join us on the show. Uh, it's such a treat getting to know about the hard work, your background, and everything you've put into your region. Also, you know, learning more about what you've done for the sport specifically um, throughout your career. Um, it's just it, it, it was a pleasure for sure. Um, it's also fun getting to you know getting to look at a lot of the roles you know within. Not only your region, but like I mentioned uh, shortly before, all the regions as well, too. Just getting that little snapshot behind the things just really goes a long way. And it really helps paint a picture uh, on a, I don't want to say a blank canvas, but a not so blank canvas with, uh, again, all of our 40 regions again. So, again, thanks, Hazel. And, you know, we wish you the best of luck on your retirement and be sure to keep in touch. You know, we'd love to hear updates um, as you as you make that uh, transition there. Now, 
on to our upcoming events. 2024 Florida Best Boys National Qualifier is happening January 26th through the 28th in Fort Lauderdale. But stay put. Because we also have the 2024 Florida Best Girls 18 National Qualifier also happening <clears throat> on January 26th through the 28th in Fort Lauderdale. So a lot of volleyball happening in Fort Lauderdale as well, too. Be sure to check out the action if you are around the area. Also, moving on to the 2024 Northern Lights Girls National Qualifier Weekend 1, also happening over the same weekend, January 26th through the 28th in Minneapolis. Moving on to Ohio. We have the 2024 Ohio Valley Girls 18 National Qualifier in Columbus from February 2nd through the 4th. Also, registration is now open. <clears throat> excuse me. It's still open for the 2024 Salt Lake City Showdown Qualifier. Uh, weekend one happening April 6th through the 8th. Be sure to get those requirements completed because weekend one registration is filling. And uh, we will we, we will be at max capacity soon. So if you don't want to get wait waitlisted, please, please, please get those registration requirements completed so I can accept you. We also have weekend two on the 12th through the 14th, which also has registration filling up quite fast. OK, get those requirements done. Can I wait to see you all in Salt Lake City? Also, if you are playing at Texas Fest in Dallas on February 3rd and 4th, do not miss a chance to watch our U.S. men's sitting national team play an exhibition match against Kazakhstan. The U.S. men are preparing for their last chance to qualify for the 2024 Paralympics. Uh, for more details and all upcoming events, you know where you can find them at usavolleyball.org. Moving on to the pro side of things. That's the wrap for the pro side of things. Again, not a lot of pro things happening right now, but Stay tuned because once they're rolling, they are rolling. Just to remember, listeners, you can rate, review, 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 share this podcast with your friends, families, teammates. Again, leave us reviews. <laughs> they really help this podcast grow and reach new listeners, especially going into uh, this 2024 year. Uh, we made a lot of progress, a lot of improvements, and a lot of just hard work to put into this podcast to give the you listeners the best experience possible and also check out our video episodes on our website and youtube again we just want to thank you all for your continued support if you know of a club that should be featured or a story you'd like us to share you can email us at the usav show at usav.org leave us a review haha <laughs> leave us feedback let us know how we're doing if you want to hear about any future topic especially going into this olympic and paralympic year email us we'll love to get those episodes and topics on uh, our podcast moving forward remember new episodes drop every other week and until then thank you all for listening to another episode of the usa volleyball show we're the official podcast of usa volleyball this has been the usa volleyball show with clarence hughes and stephen munson produced by curtis ward our content producer is lara fawcett our marketing lead is Bree Jaycox. If you enjoyed this podcast, be sure to rate and review. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the USA Volleyball Show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to your podcasts.